In this podcast, I'm going to be speaking with Abbas from Ecom Brothers, and this guy in just three years was able to build a Shopify dropshipping monster going from zero to over $20 million in sales. And this guy is 100% transparent, and he's going to reveal all of his truths, all of his secrets into how he was actually able to do this. This is a podcast that you do not want to miss. So let's waste no more time and get right to it. Please tell me a little bit about yourself and what made you actually want to start your own online business instead of the normal nine to five working in an office job? Yeah. Um, so I started like three years ago, uh, like in 2020, um, uh, with, with dropshipping, with, with e-commerce. Back then I was still a, a student actually. Um, but what happened was when the, when the lockdown happened, you know, in, in I think almost all countries and like everything started to close down. Uh, for for me and my brother, like we saw an opportunity. Okay, you know, people they still need to buy their stuff online, or, or like they still need to buy their stuff, but now they can do it offline, so they have to do it online. You know, so that's where we actually like. Okay, maybe there's an opportunity to, you know, uh, uh, start doing something. But um, yeah, it it was like in March, March, April, 2020. Yeah. Uh, it, it wasn't actually drop shipping to to begin with. It wasn't like we start with um some some course or whatever it was actually my brother he had like uh, an id uh, and he just posted on instagram um and uh, you know uh, he started getting like some some uh, people in the dm that wanted to buy the product um and it was actually like sort of customizable product so first like he had to order it from china then like you know receive it at home repackage it ship it and then you know that's where the first like sales came in but it, it was like something very small but then i think in the summer of 2020 like we learned about this uh, whole uh, drop shipping game, let's say, and um, uh, yeah, that's that's when you started. I think the the first few months it, it it wasn't something to be proud of, you know, in terms of like sales revenue. I think the first five months we did maybe like I did maybe five or six hundred euros with with the with the drop shipping. So I was focused more on the drop shipping part, and like my brother, he was focused on the sort of brand we started, you know. Uh, but yeah, I, as I was saying, like 500 or 600 euro the first couple months. Um, and then we started to go to like these e-com meetups, you know. So like we're, we're from the Netherlands and there's a lot of like meetups, events, these kind of things that, that happen. Uh, so yeah, we, we started to go and like, you know, we met our first few people that were successful in, in dropshipping. Um, and from there on, you know, like we learned from these people, became friends and, and grew together. And I think in the... In the like since we started three years ago until now we did uh over 20 million in um so the first bigger part was was drop shipping um but around eight nine months ago we, we switched to building our own brands um and it has many reasons but you know we, we can go deeper into into it later in the video yes yes we definitely will yeah it's a very good background that you gave by the way you so you mentioned like starting around march april 2020 which is exactly when the coronavirus uh, the that pandemic started hitting the whole world and at this you i i want to also ask you like what you did up until that point uh so you know you can answer that next but when mm -hmm. when that actually hit you decided you you saw that there was like an issue now with the world the world is now going to need plenty of things that maybe they didn't think that they need before now we're entering some kind of a crisis and here you realize that there's a lot of opportunity when the whole world is kind of going down and everybody's going into lockdown everybody's afraid everybody is seeing that their opportunities are fading away while you're seeing the opportunities coming in which i think is great because you're actually able to hit the hammer you know, at the right spot, being at the right time, at the right uh, spot at the right time. So, but what were you doing up until the pandemic? Let's get a little bit of that background. Yeah. So uh, before like the, the pandemic started, I was uh, still a student in uh, university in, in Delft. So it's in Netherlands. I was, I was studying, I was um, uh, studying electrical engineering. And uh, so th that's like where, what I was mainly focused on in that period, you know, it wasn't so much business or entrepreneurship. Uh, for myself, I knew like I didn't want to go the path of of um, you know like getting a degree to to go have a job. For me, it was more like um, uh, I want to acquire some skills in the engineering, and uh, uh, without going too much into detail, I, I wanted to to help 
um, uh, let's say the, the people from where I originally come from, you know. So I'm in the Netherlands, I was born there, but at the same time, my parents, they come from Iraq, you know, and Iraq isn't uh, uh, doing as well as, for example, Europe or Western Europe in terms of like their infrastructure with energy and electricity, right. these kind of things. So for me, it was more like, and uh, that's what my father always uh, was saying to me, like become skillful, like learn important stuff and then go and and help uh, uh yeah, your your origins, your roots, let's say. So I, I was more on on on, you know, getting a degree to to then make different moves. Not so much like getting getting a nine to five job, but um, I I didn't expect this also to to happen. You know, like it it switched very quickly from like okay, I was still a student, then lockdown came. Okay, uh, what are my plans next? And uh, you know, that's how I brought into e-commerce let's say and grew it and grew it and then yeah just like never look back you know just just keep moving moving ahead interesting so you started as a student in uh, electrical uh, engineering in uh, netherlands yeah. and is that a path that you chose for yourself or was that a kind of a chosen path for you or kind of like choosing together like you know learning electrical engineering yeah so i, I wouldn't say like i was born with a passion you know for for electrical engineering i think i think that's you know, maybe some people do have that. You know, I met I met people on, on the during the study, like they're very passionate about their subject. For me, it wasn't like that, you know, but um my, my father he's an he's an engineer and also like a businessman, you know, like both worlds and, and he, he built businesses out of his engineering knowledge, you know, and I think that was very impressive to 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 see. And you know, I wanted to go sort of the same uh uh that he he uh, followed in his uh, in his life. Yeah, that's interesting. So you, so you start off as a, a a student electrical engineering just so that you can get something so that you can start with something and maybe build off more things off of that. And when the pandemic hit, that's when you realize the opportunity. We already mentioned that, and that's when dropshipping actually took off. So now let's start to get to the juicy questions. I think the background is really important, but now let's get to it. So what made you choose Shopify? as your as your you know chosen platform for drop shipping we have many platforms today right ebay facebook marketplace wix woocommerce uh, shopify of course uh, etsy and others so why shopify I, I think i think shopify is the best to to build your own website you know like if you are going to sell on on ebay or like amazon let's say you're you're sort of helping their company grow instead of like your own brand website and, and whatever and it's, it's much easier to to scale and uh, you have a lot more freedom flexibility and you build your own thing you know that you can scale nobody's saying to you like okay you have to adhere to these policies and you cannot change the prices and you're limited and it's a very slow process i would always always start with like building your own website and, and it doesn't take long you know like with with shopify especially like in in this you know uh, in this period there are so many tutorials online i think you can in a few hours, you have your first website right. uh, running. It's not complicated, you know. So I would always just go go with that. Definitely, like in the, it's it's not a um, maybe it's slightly better. No, it's way better. You know, definitely go with go with Shopify. And I'm not a Shopify ambassador, by the way. So <laughs> yeah, I, I agree that like the things you said, you said about Shopify about you're actually like the owner of your store. And if you're like trying other places like eBay, then eBay is the owner of your store. And if you do anything against the rules or policies, they'll just say no, no, no. And now you don't have a business, no matter how much, how much time you worked on it. And I think that that's one of the biggest takeaways on working on Shopify is that you're actually setting your own rules. And uh, no one's telling you how much you can list on the first day, and no one's telling you what you can and cannot sell. Of course, if you're not like selling any knockoffs or trademarks, uh, so you, the, you know there won't be any problem. There are no limits, and you can do whatever you want. And when the customer buys from you, you're actually like getting their email address. Where in the, you know in other marketplaces, they're going to keep the emails to themselves. I think that's another huge advantage to Shopify. You can actually collect their email addresses, and then you can use that for uh, marketing promotion tools and more. Uh, which I'm sure that you're also doing. We're also going to get into that, but I'm just jumping ahead of myself. You mentioned in the beginning you were trying out all different types of opportunities after the coronavirus hit, right? So you were you you realized that there's a golden opportunity here. You didn't know exactly what, but here is where you actually started your search on what is something that I should be doing that can you know th that can also turn into a business opportunity and help other people and so forth. And so what you did here was you said that your brother started uh, a POD trial like print on demand on instagram um guessing no, it, that it, it, it wasn't like no no it, it was actually necklaces you know um necklaces. Uh, 
yeah, so it, like custom custom customized yeah, necklaces like, these customized necklaces you know and, and there, there's a whole story like why and and you know but uh to to keep it short yeah that's where, where we started with um uh but, but yeah what, what was your question again that, like what, what 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 happened from there so he started that was it successful not successful and what was uh, the next step yeah yeah so it was like low-key successful you know i think uh, looking back it, it was nothing but i think it, at some point you know in the first few weeks it did like uh, maybe 10k in revenue you know or like 5k in revenue i don't remember exactly but that was already like something huge you know especially like where we come from you know immigrants like you don't really see money that that often in in, in where, where you grow up so that was something like good but it, there wasn't much profit on it you know like uh you have okay. these kind of rules like vat um uh, what i was saying like you order it and then you resend it to your customers like extra shipping fee all these kind of things it turned out like with the revenue it was all loss you know so and there's so a lot of like, like you were ordering from your supplier to your house and then from your house you're shipping it to the customer so a lot of logistics uh, long shipping times and uh, that's also probably something that uh, um, brought you, you know, took you away from that business model. So what actually brought you into dropshipping? Like, where did you hear about it? Yeah, so so what it was like, okay, um, my brother, he saw like there is a way, like, you know, you can advertise on, on Facebook. And uh, w once you start doing your research, you also get hit by by uh, these ads, you know, about dropshipping or whatever. Right, there's, you start so getting retargeted. You know, it's very easy to like, know like uh, which touch points are there with with uh, uh let's say this this industry and then you just do your research and like okay you know you, you launch a first campaign um uh and then you realize okay maybe there's an opportunity to to sell everything instead of just focusing on on one thing um and that that's how you know like you see okay other people are selling maybe th this product um so what i was doing like okay try and build a whole store for it uh, but every time you know it 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 takes time that you need to prepare the creatives and everything. So eventually we were like, okay, let's just have one website and try to, you know, just have a product page, prepare it and then, and then push on that page, you know? So it was like very, uh, step by step. It wasn't like, okay, I wake up and I have to do uh, general, uh, drop shipping and test as many products. It was just like, okay, what is this guy selling? What is he selling? And, uh, you know, try so to just do research, research. Yeah, researching and testing from, seeing what other competitors are doing. So what I like about here is that you joined with your brother. So this is something that usually uh, I don't see that happening often. It's usually I'm talking with uh, or I have experience with solo uh, entrepreneurs and, you know, everybody's like working with themselves and maybe they have like virtual assistants and that's where that usually ends. So in your case, you actually have your brother working with you and that's why you two call yourself the Ecom Brothers, which I think is great. What made you actually think that, you know, starting a business with someone you know and love is a good idea and you guys won't end up like fighting on what, you know, you think is right for the business and, you know, that can lead to other things? Yeah, that, that's a good question. Like, I, I would say it's natural, natural for me. Like, I've grown up doing always things together with my brother, you know, like the, the first money we make, it's 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 together. The the first thing we try, if we fight, like if my, if my brother has a fight with a person, I always join. Same way, if I have a problem, my, my brother joined. Like, we always have each other back. And, and that's how we how we grew up, you know. Like, my, my father raised us uh, this way. And I don't know any better. You know, so when I, I meet people in, like, the industry and, and e-commerce, and, like, maybe after a period of time, I realize, oh, you do have a brother. Like, wh where the fuck is your brother? You know? <laughs> like, I should meet him. Like, if you know me, then you know my brother. And and if you know my brother, then you will know me. Like, it's... it's uh, uh, and why wouldn't you? Right. you know? Yeah, I think that's great. I, 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 have three, I have three sisters and everybody's doing their own thing. Like, there is no... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I have a sister. I have a sister, but it's, it's different, you know. It's different. Like, Maybe. My, my sister, I, I love her very much, but it's 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 a different dynamic than than uh, my brother, you know. And if if I had another brother, then it would be the three Ecom brothers. Yeah, yeah definitely. It would be three uh, Ecom brothers. Yeah, it's yeah, very yeah. interesting. Look, it's very interesting that you teamed up with your brother and it's also someone that you can trust. When you have a business partner, the number one thing is trust, right? You can love each other, you can hate each other, but you need to trust each other. Otherwise, you know, something probably bad is not is, is going to happen sooner or later. And business is trust. And I think that there's no one you can trust more than a family member, more than a friend, more than a colleague, and more than, uh, I don't know, a friend of a friend of a, or a family member. This is like, the biggest trust that you can gain and you already got that so i think that's great yeah. okay let's move on to more questions about drop shipping so product research 
how do you find what products like how, how did that i understand that you're looking at competitors and you're seeing what they're selling and then you're trying that out for yourself how what other product research methods do you have to the, the ones that actually were able to find you the winning products not the ones that you were like practicing with in the beginning yeah so so you have to see like what is what is selling currently in the market you know like don't go and uh think of a product oh yeah maybe i, I like this product so i want to sell it that, that, that's booty. right you have to sell yeah. what people are, are willing to buy and the best right. way to know if people are willing to buy is if it's already selling like there is no problem in, in competition it just means the market is already there you know you can right. tap into the market and right. if you are you know skilled in in advertising or, or not even if you just launch and you see like okay am i profitable you know this product is already selling so i can you know very easy uh, uh I can see why it's selling, so I can do something similar. You know, you don't need to copy one on one, but you know, with ChatGPT, there's a lot of ways to to uh, uh, you know rebrand something as your own and launch very quickly. Um, right. But yeah, and it could also be a similar product. It doesn't have to be one on one exactly the same product. It can also be it can also be something similar. Definitely, definitely. But don't go like this was in the beginning. I remember I just try a product. I think, oh yeah, this is a very smart product, or maybe people want this. It, at the end of the day, you need data. To prove that right. the product is selling, and if you see already it's selling at somebody else, well, that works, you know. So, so mm -hmm. that's uh, yeah, that's definitely the, the the best way, you know. Okay. So a lot about. By the way, those who are joining us and you're new and you're still wondering what we're talking about, what are these online stores? We're talking about the dropshipping business model. So dropshipping is a business model that allows you to sell uh, things on your store to sell products without actually holding them in stock. It means that you're not putting any money in inventory. There are very very low upfront costs of starting this business, and pretty much anyone can do it with just a little bit of. Uh, knowledge and uh, tools and the right resources and the right structure. So this is a dropshipping business model. Once you get an order, you go to your supplier's website, you purchase the product, you send it to the end customer, and you keep the profit between the selling price and the source price. And this is actually what we're talking about right here. So uh, Ecom Brothers, uh, Abbas from Ecom Brothers, Brothers is doing it on Shopify. And now we're going to dive a little bit deeper into that. So we talked about why Shopify. We talked about your come up story. Now I want to talk about, we talked about product research. Next is your suppliers. So, you know, you're doing your product research. R up until this point, you haven't looked into suppliers. Now that you found your product, how do you know, like, who your supplier is going to be? And how do you find suppliers to work with? Yeah, so uh, it, what we do is we work with, uh, with agents, you know. So you have people that are very experienced in, uh, they have a very big network with factories in China, you know. So they are like, people in China and uh, they have very big networks. And if you send them a product in, in 24 hours, you get the quotation like, okay, it's gonna cost you this much. Uh, uh, and if we ship it for you, then it's also gonna cost this much. So this is the total price. Um, uh, but that, that's the best way. Like don't go and, and sell something from an AliExpress or, or whatever, because uh, uh, you don't, like you need to work with trusted people, you know, uh, people that, that deliver fast and deliver quality. Uh, um, so yeah, if you just work with a random supplier on, on AliExpress, it's, it's going to create a, a chaos. You're going to get banned on your payment providers, um, banned on your, you know, advertising account. So it's, it's just a mess. Okay. The next question that many people I'm sure are wondering right now is how do you actually find these private agents? Because everybody's, you, almost everybody, 90% of dropshippers start with AliExpress because it's easy, it's convenient, they're dropshipping friendly, uh, they support dropshippers and there's just a lot of items there and it's cheap and you, we know all the reasons. But how do you actually jump from AliExpress to these uh, private agents and do they work with new dropshippers who just got started? Uh, network. It's you, you get this from your network, you know, like if you don't talk to people, uh, then you won't know who is who. Um, but I mean, yeah. If if people need need help with an agent, they they can shoot me a message on Insta, and I can, uh, you know, send them my agent that I work with. They they work with small dropshippers, big dropshippers. It, it, uh, okay, that's cool. That's already a freebie for anyone who's listening. If you guys are listening to this on uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or anywhere where you're not seeing the visual video of us actually talking, then you won't be able to see. Go to our YouTube channel at YouTube.com/slash/autoDS. Find this video. Search for Ecom Brothers, and you'll find this video. Look below the video. I'm going to leave the link to his. Uh, to Abbas's uh, Instagram uh, channel so that you all can spam him and ask for the private supplier and uh, he will help you with it. And this is it. This is networking. This is exactly what uh, Abbas is talking about. This is one of his, one of the 
uh, paths that he took uh, uh, along his adventure when he started uh, e-commerce. He went to e-commerce uh, meetups, as uh, as mentioned earlier in this uh, uh, meeting, and that's how he actually found the connections, especially the suppliers, and I'm sure more things that we're going to talk about. Okay, so there's a golden nugget for everyone. Now, here's a little uh, here's a little tip. I didn't send uh, Ecom Brothers, I didn't send Abbas the questions that I'm going to ask him in this interview. So the next question could be a little bit prob problematic. And I already told him that if there's a question that he does doesn't like, he doesn't have to answer. So he's unprepared for all, this, all of the questions in this interview. And my next question is, can you share a little bit about your average monthly revenue and profit percentage? Okay, so so you want to talk me, uh, you want me to talk about numbers. So as I was saying, Number. like lifetime, since like, uh, we started three years ago, we did over 20, uh, 20 million in, in revenue. Wow. With, with a good in uh, three years, right? Yeah. So this is like from starting like with no knowledge, nothing up until this point. It's around three years. And, okay. uh, and how much is that in profit about around? I, I would say like people in the industry, they know like a typical good profit margin. So uh, people can do their. Business. So it's around there. It's around the typical profit margin. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. But like, a lot of things happen in the way you know, like you get holds, these kind of things. You're... Okay, let's just put it this way: without actually talking about the real number, it's it's not less than twenty percent, right? Uh, no, 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 definitely. Okay, no, no, no. like okay. You... I just want to make that clear to anyone who's listening, because mm -hmm. this is something that I go over uh, over and over, time and time again, because I see a lot of people who are starting off and they think that they need to kill the competition in order to make their first sales, so they're going to become like the cheapest uh, sellers in the market, and you know. They can even lose money. They can sell on 0%, 5%, 10%, like really bad numbers just to get their stores started. And I really don't think that it's uh, needed. I, I, so I'm glad that you know. Some people take the approach of like, okay, you want a lifetime. In lifetime of your, your customer, you can be profitable. Like the first sale, that, that's that's bullshit. Especially if like, you're just starting, focus on being profitable the, the first mm -hmm. sale, you know. And if, mm -hmm. you, if you do your marketing well, then you can get profit margins of like, 35 40 percent even 50 percent um, yeah. if, if you do it bad then you you know go to the lower end of like 15 percent so you have to uh um like it it doesn't just have like you always have to monitor like what's your profit margin and then like scale up or scale down uh, accordingly like you don't want a lot of revenue and then like five percent uh, uh profit margin Right, right. So there's no reason to profit low, even when you're just starting off, even if you're just trying to get your first few sales and reviews, there's no reason to sell at a low profit, especially because this business model is easy and doesn't require you to try to kill the whole market. You're not going to get anywhere from that. Yeah, so I'm also glad you heard from you. So my next question is about, you also, you also mentioned it about creating a brand. So this is something that's a little bit difficult when you're dropshipping because you know how you're dropshipping. So you're like, you're always ordering one unit from your supplier. So if you're ordering one unit and you reach out to your supplier and you're like, hey, can you please put like a cool box with my name and my logo? He's going to say no, because you're only ordering one unit and it's not going to be cost worthy to do that, to manufacture just for one. So if you want, you can order 50, you can order 100 and then I will you know, brand those boxes for you and you will pay for them up front. But now you're not drop shipping anymore. So how exactly do you combine drop shipping and creating a brand for your business, creating a huge brand presence at the same time? How does that work? I would say the difference between like building a brand and, and doing drop shipping is uh, having a little more patience, you know, a little bit more patience uh, in terms of, uh, you know, like when opening stock, it takes time when, when, you know, like things when, when building a brand, it takes a little bit more time to to get your momentum. Like with dropshipping, you can very easily just test fifty products in one week, see what works, and then scale that up. And your your agent or your supplier, or whatever, they they take care of of logistics. So it's a lot right. quicker. Um, but yeah, like I think a lot of people when when they uh, go build their brand uh, after learning the skills of like marketing, uh, building a team, uh, scaling up. Uh, you can take all those all those skills and, and and build your big brand, but the issue is people don't have patience, you know. So they don't see, they see the brand is not profitable or like no sales in the co first couple of weeks. That that's like a no go if you yeah uh, because yeah. you're very like yeah. you can do very high numbers the first day, the first two days, you know, if you just pump in ad spend. So uh, I think yeah, like uh, a lot of like I saw a lot of big dropshippers they try to transition and then they fail and they go back. Um, but I don't think that's that's a good move, you know, like use drop shipping as your vehicle to learn everything about e-commerce and then move on to to build things that can uh, 
uh, are like more sustainable. You know, if you if you do something right. on like high volume, you will see uh, it's it's always like uh, a lot of like up down up down up down. Some ad account get banned. Uh, uh, a payment provider for some reason they they hold your money. You know, these kind of things happen a lot, a lot. Definitely on like when you do a high high volume. If you want to make like an extra five k or ten k a month, uh, I, by all means. Uh, not not on a, you know, but if you want to scale like one million, two million, three million in in one month, well, it's, you're gonna yeah expect yeah. expect those road bumps, yeah. but they're all manageable. It doesn't mean that that's the end of your business. That's 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 one, and two, like you said, so use product use drop shipping for product research, and then use uh, creating a brand and uh, and and a brand identity and all of that. Once you actually find your winning products, and then what? And then you would. Uh, use them what in a warehouse, like purchase inventory, put them in a warehouse, and and um, and brand them, and then ship it out from your own warehouse. Or do you continue drop shipping, just with uh, just with maybe I don't know, putting like a store logo and like uh, making your store look branded, but not actually like branding your packaging. So do you do both, or do you like do you play around with that, or what? No, no, no. So what what we do is actually like, okay, we we test in the beginning. Okay, is there uh, so let's say we want to brand the product. This is the uh, people that are listening. Like this is good sauce, you know. Um, what we do is okay. We we validate the product first. You know, we we launch some ads. See, okay, there is potential here. It's not great results, but for us, like w- with time, you get an eye. Like okay, this product has potential or not? Potential. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then we you know figure out uh, uh, what's the best quality, get the best pricing, these kind of things, and then just you know go with it. I'm, I'm buying bulk. Uh, you know, 5,000, 10,000, 20,000 pieces. Um, but this comes because we have experience with... Advanced. Okay. This is an advanced tactic. This is an, an advanced strategy. If you're just starting off, use product, use dropshipping, like we said, for product research to see what you, to find your winners and then move on to uh, what Abbas is uh, mentioning. Yeah, now. yeah, definitely. So like at this point, we were at like two years in the game, you know, like the, the first couple months, nothing. But then like after that, we were doing a lot on, on high skill. So you, you get an eye and a feeling like, okay, this product is going to work. Um, uh, th- of course, like you, you should have a branded website uh, if you if you want to, to have a brand. But I think also like uh, why not just buy in bulk? Like it's it's cheaper. Um, yeah, just wait like two, three, four weeks, whatever. But I mean, I mean, why not? You know, like it's it's uh, an overall better customer experience, um, and you you get the benefit and and the stability of of having these things uh, in check. Let's say. So this is what we what we would call the hybrid dropshipping business model, where on one hand you're dropshipping, you're testing out products, you're seeing what works, you're testing the market, and on the other hand, on the other half of your business, you're actually buying bulk in the items that are working well for you, that are selling well in dropshipping, that you actually have experience from, and then you're making more sales because you bought them in bulk, you're paying a lower price, and you're even shipping them faster to your uh, customers, yeah. and this is the... A uh, long time of value for your business, which I think is great. This is the hybrid model. That we like. I, I, I want to make it very clear, like so, so people don't uh, misunderstand me. Um, mm-hmm. Definitely, if you're a beginner, like don't think about buying in bulk. Like it, it doesn't make sense. So, so think right. about it this way. Like let's say you buy ten thousand pieces of, of a single product, and it, it costs you whatever four dollars. So you spend forty k, uh, um, and like your your budget isn't limited. You know, like you, you spend a lot of money in into inventory, but What's the added value for uh, a single customer? Does he care that you have millions in stock? He doesn't care. He just no, wants he a doesn't. single product. So especially if you don't have the the ability to... So the, the reason I buy in bulk is because I, I want to scale faster. But it doesn't mean like you have to start with bulk. Definitely, like the, the first... Uh, just, just start selling. Because you want to be able to come back. If you made a mistake, you want to be able to come back and, and continue building your business. And if you spend 40K on inventory and you didn't make enough sales to make up for that, you won't have you won't be able to come back from that because you put pretty much all you have on that one product that didn't really work for you. Definitely. So I, I have actually one 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 person, good dropshipper, you know, did, did made some money, uh, made a couple hundred uh, uh, K like in profit. So what he did was like, okay, he thought he, he was, you know, a very experienced. So he dumped actually like all his money in inventory for his brand. You know, he wanted to level up, go from dropshipping to, to you know, having stock. Um, mm-hmm. And it fucked him because he couldn't sell it. So we had to go back. So he did have experience and he still messed up because he still bought the wrong product. Why do you think that happened? Well, I, I think, I think 
I, I don't know the exact details. You know, I, I don't. It's like it's a painful subject. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I, I would say. I mean, but I what, what I, I assume is like uh, maybe he made the mistake of like thinking the product is going to work without actually validating. Yeah. So the vetting thing, the, the vetting probably didn't go too well for him. Maybe he didn't check it enough. And he didn't check the target audience well enough. But the, the biggest mistake here, it's not if you research wrong, that's fine. But you have to make sure that you have enough space to come back in case you made a mistake and that one didn't work for you. And that's why I'm you know, talking about this point again. So he put all his budget on that product and then didn't leave room for mistakes. So put half that budget so that you can use the other half to come back in case that doesn't work for you. You don't have to scale up to the point where you, you will risk it. Yeah, oh. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I would use like no budget for inventory. Like don't think about, like inventory is the least added value for your business. Right. Like learn, like invest in, in all your money in um, building out uh, a team. Try as many things with, with advertising, you know. There's a lot of different ways you can advertise. Try things with influencers. Um, spend all your money on those. Like inventory, it's, there is nothing, there is no added value. Like maybe you get a couple extra days faster shipping, uh, but if you communicate with your customers, it's not, it's not a big deal. Like do, do not spend your money on it. Oh, it's only like at the point where things are going, you can, you can start if you want, you know, if you want to do something long-term with the product and, and, you know, differentiate, of course, go, go, go make your move, but you don't need uh, to, to buy in bulk. No, you can just drop Yeah, it. otherwise there's going to be no added value and you're just spending money and you could have done it with drop shipping without spending the money it, and testing out even more products. Definitely. Like, it, yeah, it, for it sure. It's definitely in the beginning a wasted wasted money now. Especially yeah, in, in the beginning. Yeah. yeah, definitely start off, uh, definitely start off drop shipping. Don't even think about, you know, a lot of people want to make money quick, right? And that's the whole thing. So they're like, wait, if I can, if I, if I can buy inventory and I'll make sales quicker, which is not the case that you have to do your research, but, and then they're thinking, okay, so let, let's just do that, right? Let's just put money and scale faster and get money faster. And that's just not the way to do it. Start drop shipping. It's the best way to test the market. It's the best way to find winning products. And like you mentioned in the beginning, don't try to guess what the next sale will be or what your first sale will be because you'll probably 99.99999% you will not know what products you're going to sell yeah. and you will not be able to guess what products are going to sell so that's why you're going to test the market you're going to see what your competitors are doing just like you mentioned uh, Abbas one thing that we didn't talk about is marketing so we talked like a little bit but what are you like your marketing strategies what are you doing for marketing are you running ads is it email campaigns is it blog pages is it a little bit of everything yeah um so so this is the the way we work so let, let's say you have a product for, for $10, mm -hmm. you know, shipping, product, including everything, $10, and you sell it for $40. So you have this $30 margin, you know, right. you sell for 40, then, you know, like you have, you have VAT, whatever. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, you have to find out, okay, what's, what is your margin? What is your margin? And then you, you go and run ads, Facebook, TikTok, whatever. Um, and your cost per... What's your stop, what's your stop point? What's your stop point for that type of product? Yeah, so so like if you have thirty dollars as a profit margin to to spend, and you're getting twenty dollars on average for a customer, then you're profitable. Like this is what it comes down to. Like you can go into marketing and and, and think about all the thousand different metrics and you know the scroll stopping and and the three percent uh, you know watch time all video all views. Yeah all, yeah, all these kind of things. Like it all comes down to are you profitable? Or not, you know? Are are you okay with with five dollar profit on on the product after everything gets gets stripped away from the revenue? Okay, you know. Otherwise, you know, maybe scale down, maybe try new things. But it all comes down to like, are you profitable? Um, so yeah, with with and it doesn't matter like which which uh, marketing channel. Like you can do Facebook, you can do TikTok, you can do Google. Um, are you profitable? Pinterest also. We did a lot of things on Pinterest. Are you profitable at the end of the day? Yes or no? Um, um, but then it comes down to like, okay, what make, how, how can I become more profitable or like, uh, uh, you know, then you learn about, okay, making good creatives, uh, better marketing, but the, the best thing is just see what is working for other people and learn from that very quickly. If you're gonna, you know. That's probably gonna be one of the biggest advice that you're gonna get in your dropshipping game, no matter what level you're on. If you're checking out the competition and you're learning from them and you're acting upon their best practices, not copying and pasting, you're gonna make it unique to your own store. You're gonna maybe have a different marketing angle, different target audience, but this is how you're gonna make it. And, uh, and uh, yeah, it's definitely checking out the competition. But what about like, are you, is it only uh, pay-per-click ads for you? Like, is it just pay-per-click uh, campaigns in, 
all types of different uh, social media channels. No. Is that what it comes down to for marketing? Uh, for, for us, we mainly scale on uh, Facebook, Facebook, Instagram, you know, but it's the same, same ad yes. manager. Together. Um, mm -hmm. um, and then we have, you know, like, if, especially if you're doing a brand, uh, all the channels become, become important, but most of it comes from Facebook. Um, uh, and it's just based on, it's not pay-per-click. That's, that's Google. Have you tried TikTok? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Like we scaled a lot on TikTok. Um, uh, also, we did a little bit of TikTok organic, but it's not. Uh, uh, we like to be able to uh, uh, control how uh, how fast we grow. You know, like with with TikTok, yeah. there isn't. Yeah, it's very we'll see or, It's low key. Like with if you run ads, like you can build a money printing um, machine, basically. Like it's if, you do if it right. you're profitable, yeah. then you can just scale and scale hard. Like you can go from like the first day 100 euro in revenue um and if you right. scale fast you can do 10k the next day if if you know how to scale but it, it all comes down to like are we profitable yes then we increase the budget or, or we launch more campaigns and we scale harder so uh, so another question about marketing so when you do do the marketing on facebook uh, ads which is your your bread and butter for marketing do you make like what three ad copies per product in the beginning just to test it out uh and then putting like a certain budget for each one changing just a little bit of the first few seconds on the creative and are you creating your own videos too how does that work the the details let's say i think details they, they change with time um i think the most important thing is to just test like go spend actual money like put, put in a budget and 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 see what happens and and learn to read the metrics and and figure out if you're profitable like for me to say, like you have to do three ad copies with five call to actions, and these, it, it's, it's not it's, science. It's not, it's not black. No, definitely yeah. not. And I, I think also like with with iOS fourteen, like which, which happened so, some time ago, um, tracking it, it 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 it's not what it used to be, you know. So you just have to figure out like are you profitable? But oh, definitely like um, uh, how do I say it? like test out, you know. See, see a strategy on YouTube. Okay, test it out. Does it work? You know, but keep things simple. You know, like you, you can, you can uh, uh, spend hours and hours and hours hoping to improve three percent. But what if you just launched a new product and it became the big winner of, of you know, Europe, whatever. Look, uh, I have uh, where we are nearing towards the end, but I have some more juicy questions. So stay with, so stay with us, everyone who's listening. So. Like you said, best practices also in marketing, test, see what's going on. I couldn't get the, the, the right numbers from you. Many people like to hear numbers. They want to know exactly what they need to do, and then they're going to try exactly that. But I completely understand, and I also agree with you, that there is no exact math to this. There's no exact science, and you have to test it out. And you know what to test out by just seeing what other people are doing. So this is the formula that we all need to start with and practice with and gain experience with in order to start getting the data and the feedback. And then we know what we need to work with. We know what starts to work and how to move forward from here. Yeah. So as a seasoned professional in the dropshipping space, what are some of the common mistakes and pitfalls since you're doing a lot of networking with other people? And I'm sure that you're doing networking a lot with successful people, but even they, I mean, everybody has mistakes that they make along the way, even you, I'm sure. So what are some of the like m common mistakes and pitfalls that you see that most people are making when they're starting off? And what tips can you give to avoid those mistakes? By, by the way, like for, for people that are listening, you know, I think the the principles that you know we we discuss, uh, Liron, Liron and I, uh, I think the principle you can already build like your seven figure business very easily, you know, um, uh, like the, the principles of seeing what what is working for other people, uh, uh, you know, having a network which we're going to talk about uh, more, um, you know, moving fast, like it doesn't need to be perfect, just do it, like like it's it's not it's not rocket science just just do the thing and work times harder than than all the other people you know like most people are, are like pretty lazy um uh, and um there, there will be people that when they hear the story they think like oh yeah i i don't believe it you know how, right. how can a young person make like okay fine you just I, I you don't need to believe me i'm just it doesn't make it not true yeah yeah like like things happen you know like billions of dollars flow every day in the economy um, and you're not like just start yeah. getting in the market and 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 learn from it. 
Um, but what was and best practices is the way to do it. Sorry for interrupting yeah. you. We I just have to do with a lot of things that you're saying. Yeah, definitely. But what, what was your your question again? Like uh, about networking. What so so yeah. What are the biggest mistakes that you see people make? Which is this is probably one of them, right? One of the mistakes that people make in the beginning is that they're lazy. They're looking for an exact figure. Some of them won't even look at what other people are doing. Some of them don't even know that the competition exists or they know, but they don't want to look because they want to like, you know, go with their own path. Mm -hmm. This is one of the biggest mistakes, right? You're not getting the knowledge. You don't know the structure. You don't know what to do. And then you're, you're going to eBay or Shopify. You're starting a new store and you don't know what the next step is. Or you made a store, you uploaded a product, you got to sell. And now you don't know what to do with that sell. Like, what do I do now? And I see a lot of these examples, but what are some of the examples that like, you know, just mistakes that people make from the beginning and uh, what they should do to avoid it, if you can think of any. I think I think the the worst is that people are just slow. People are like very, very slow. Like they think about- You mean not taking action? Like learning, but not doing anything about it? Yeah, def like there is no point in just learning and consuming content and then not doing anything. But I mean, you, you, right. you get sort of closer to your goal. But yeah, you have people like, I remember like, um, so, so we did like a podcast in the Netherlands with, uh, uh, I don't know if you know him, Joshua Katz. So he's a good, good friend now. But um, he, he had like this um, Dropship Academy, which was like a, so, sort of a community, you know, in the Netherlands. And people got to know each other. So we did like a podcast. And through this podcast, we had like people, you know, reaching out to us. Oh, yeah, brother, like, can you, can you help me? I'm already uh, doing five years uh, uh, in e-commerce, but, you know, uh, didn't work out yet. You know, I, I, I'm still working my normal job. And, and I'm thinking to myself, like, how the fuck in five years? Like, it, it took me five months to to make, like, become profitable. And from there, it was just, like, making good money, you know? Like, it, it, it doesn't, like, if you want it, you'll get it very fast. But because he, he didn't, yeah, I'm thinking he didn't want it. Like he want, he didn't. Maybe he wanted it, but he didn't do enough. To, yeah, like, to, to, like people, people say they want it, but then they also want to watch the the whatever. I don't know. Netflix, Netflix, yeah. Netflix football yeah. match. They want to chill with their friends. They want to do all this. Like, bro, when when I when I saw the 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 opportunity and like first I see the first time I see profit, bro, I didn't sleep. Like I had uh, maybe six months. Uh, there wasn't a single night. Where I slept during, like I sleep maybe from uh, whatever, like afternoon, 12 p.m. to like 4, 4 p.m. You know, like get three, four hours sleep during the day. The whole time just working because I want to be. That's what we call passion. And passion will usually bring you to your success because you won't mind the failures along the way. But the other people, the slow people that you're talking about, the ones who are not moving fast enough, they're just not, the, the, the passion is just not there enough because if the passion was there, they would sacrifice everything else in order to make this happen and not just wait for someone to find someone who succeeds at it and then ask him how he's doing it. Yeah. Uh, and it's also the same for me. I mean, I've been dropshipping for over six years now, like a few years before the pandemic started. And it's the same. Like the, when I was starting up, people are like, yeah, yeah, I heard it's dead or, or many other things. Like, uh, how can you sell something if they can just go and find the cheaper price? And all of the things that people usually say, the, the questions, the, the, the negative questions that they usually ask in the beginning and a few years later when i became i mean i became successful on my first year and maybe three months but a, a couple years after i was you know still doing it every day passively without putting any time into it because i'm good i'm comfortable with what i have so far th those same people from a few years back come to me and they're like hey so i see that it's working for you can you show me how to do it <laughs> i'm like no i mean uh, I'm not looking to network with you anymore. I need to network with people who are, are at my stage and are, are, are at my level. And, you know, you're a little bit too slow. So that's a nice example for, for the slowness that you're talking Definitely. about. Like for me, it's it's not even so much about passion that I'm passionate about doing dropshipping. Like, as I was saying, I have a background in uh, electrical engineering, you know, like right. selling some bullshit or, or some basic products online. Like it, it doesn't excite me. And, and there there isn't much uh, sort of, it's not like mentally challenging. Uh, it's not like some in intelligent or like complex subject that I have to understand. I have the, maybe the I, feeling that it gives you, the feeling of success, the feeling of money yeah, pouring like in. My, my whole life, I always work hard with whatever I'm working at at the time. You know, like if it's if it's my study and I need to understand the subject, I, I work my ass off, and and then it, uh, you know, with the money, I, I work my ass off. Like you. And it's a competition. If if you're the, the slow guy, you're go, you're going to lose. You know, if you say uh, I want to, I have many like uh, uh, like um, you know cousins or friends or whatever. I tried to help. You know, like when I saw this opportunity of money and, and what I was saying, like my background 
there, there isn't money in my background. You know, like people don't drive a nice car, don't have a, a good house, these kind of things. So when I saw what, what was working for me, it's like um, this escape to a new world, like a new, a new life, you know. I, I don't need to sleep. I just go work, 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 you know, build team, launch more, do more, whatever. Um, but then I also try to get my people from my, you know, where I grew up with, I try to get them involved. Like, go do this, go learn this, go. There's opportunity, yeah. there's money. And and then I realized, oh, I, I know why it won't work for you. You're fucking lazy. You don't want it enough. Yeah, you're, you're not stupid. I have, I have, like, I think the more dumb you are, the more money you even make. Like, it's not about intelligence, you know. It's just about yeah. you know, like you're lazy. Ah, you, you wake up at this yeah. time. Ah, you you're not even yeah. you don't want it. I don't text you about it anymore. You just stop. Yeah, that's amazing. I, I, I have two friends exactly with the same exact story. So there were two friends that I did take along with me, even a couple uh, uh, years after I uh, I gave two uh, free. You know, I taught them for free. The rest I said no because that like too much was starting to come you know my way. But there were two that I did accept and the ones that I did teach and they were able to do it. They started their stores. They did product research, they made sales, they made profit. And when the time came to scale, they just got lazy. And they just, at some point, they just kind of, they're like, hey, you know what? You can just take my stores. Like, I, I don't, uh, I don't know. Like, I, I just don't feel it. You can just take it. And I was like, are, are you kidding me? Give me your stores like now. And I took them and, you know, I did what I did with them. And I would do the same thing over and over again. So I realized then that there is only a limit to how much you can push people, right, to do it because they have to want to do it themselves. And sometimes they think they want to do it. And then when they get into it, they're like, oh, I have to give customer service. I don't know. Like, I didn't think about that before. And, you know, all these like stupid reasons for all of a sudden, like dropping out. Now they weren't making thousands of dollars a month. They were making uh, uh, a few hundred at the most, but you know, from here you're already making money. So why not scale from here? So that's what gets me excited, but it didn't get them excited. So we can't expect everyone to have the same level of uh, passion, maybe not for the model, but for the feeling of success and the money that we get from it. But uh, uh, yeah, that's that's one of the things. That's one of the tips. One of the common pitfalls uh, that we're seeing. Yeah. The, but do you have like any? Yeah. The, go ahead. The reason, like I, I, uh, you know, like sometimes do this kind of interview. It's it's not for the people that uh, I'm not here to convince people. Like, oh yeah, you should take action in your life. Like, I don't care if you don't want it. Go go fuck yourself. I, I don't. I like. I literally. I don't care. the The reason I do this is I know there are people that will listen and and for example, young or or older, whatever. Um, mm -hmm. But they yeah. they, they want to get inspired, you know. Like they want to see people because that's what worked for for me also, you know. Like her, hearing these kind of interviews where people actually made it, you know. They they yeah. have a good. And now you're being interviewed. Yeah, yeah. and and. and they actually made it because they, they put in the work. I, I, I do it for, for these people, you know, so it, it would yeah, be and, and, yeah, like, and for, and for everyone who's listening, to everything here is true. Like he, uh, uh, Econ Brothers, Abbas is not like, there is no partnership between us. There is like no affiliate links. There's like nothing. It's just, he, he just wanted to come onto the channel and, and, and pour his value because that's what he likes to do, which I think is completely amazing. And it's one of the things that I stand for in our content. And, you know, I, I couldn't, I, I didn't even think twice for this interview. I'm really happy that you did it, by the way. Thank, thank you, brother. I mean, your well, information is really original. Th thank you, brother. What would be nice, like, after, you know, one year, people say, oh, yeah, I, I saw this interview, you know, it, it helped me, gave me extra boost, and, and you know, this is... Uh, it's, it's worth it when you get that. Yeah, it's a good feeling. It's a good feeling to know that you were actually able to help someone who actually was able to succeed, and they're taking their business seriously, and they didn't close it down, like, a year later because they got lazy. Uh, yeah. I think it's an amazing feeling. Yeah, many people that do that, you know, many people. Many people do, and maybe many people don't. By the way, the successful people, from my uh, experience, they usually stay quiet, right? So people who are succeeding, and there's tens of thousands of them, you don't hear from them. You do hear from the tens of thousands who didn't succeed because people who are failing and stuff, not just in this, but in anything in life, they like to cry about it, right? They like to complain. They like to go online. They like to write posts. When people are successful at life, like you're probably not going to hear about it that much because most of them are quiet with their success. And that's why I'm glad to have people like you who are actually, you know, able to speak openly about it and without asking for anything in return, just giving, pouring out the value out there and giving it to anyone who just wants to come and grab it. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's great. <clears throat> that's great, by the way. And for for me, like, uh, I, I try to live on my, in my bubble of like only, you know, people that are making moves, that are successful, that are not lazy, that, that uh, you know, like, because if, if you are with 
uh, lazy or negative people, it like it affects you also. You know, it affects you. So right, like my right. like uh, um, everybody I see, they are making moves. They they don't talk about I don't feed it or like it's it's this, this bullshit. I don't see it in my daily life. You know, I'm mm-hmm. very like okay, th- these are the people I network with. This is the the the. People are which is the importance of networking, which takes us back to the beginning of the interview. We talked about networking. This is what brought you up. And this is one of the most important things. So when you are doing it, do it with people who are at the same level as you or at a higher level than you. And you can also contribute contribute something to them. So they would let you, you know, into their network too. And that way you're going to build the best network that you can. But if you're going to build a network with people who are not at your level and they're all lazy, but you know, you're kind of giving them an opportunity to learn something from you. That's not networking. That's just you being a mentor and wasting time on other people. Uh, so it's definitely networking with the right people, which I, I, again, I, mean, I have, I have people like my network, they're, they're far above, you know, far above. And I have people like, uh, uh, lower. It's, it's not like I only need to talk with people that are higher. Otherwise I don't know. It's not, it's not like that, but, um, I mean, these negative around the same level. I mean, you wouldn't network with people who haven't started e-commerce, right? What are you going to learn from them? No, that, that's that's not networking. That, that's not networking because they there is nothing to 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 talk about. Uh, yeah. let, let's say somebody has, uh, I don't know, uh, he, he owns what, how many stores or whatever in in Bulgaria. I, I don't know. Like some like it's okay. Why did it work for you? You know, like th- these kind of things are always interesting to learn. But yeah. I'm, I'm talking yeah. more about like, okay, these negative traits of people, you know, like a lot of people are, are like to complain, like to be lazy. These kind of people, I, I stay away, like, stay away religiously, you know, that's yeah, very important. Sure. But like, you don't have to be higher. Otherwise I don't talk. No, no, definitely. Like, uh, I, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. Even, even, if you are, you're right. even, even if you are like, uh, you have less money or whatever it doesn't matter because you know some people have a solution for some problem and that makes them very valuable you know like i have a lot of uh, solutions in my business like uh, especially if you want to do like e-commerce on a high high scale you're gonna encounter problems that you didn't know existed you know but then you need solutions and and, and how are you going to come up with solutions um it's not on google it's it's not on google like you have to talk with people and and you have to give value and get value back you know so yeah. that's why your network is very important and that you have people, you know, that you're able right. to, to talk to. Because that's where, like, I have solution. I'm like, okay, how the fuck do we end up here? I don't know, but, you know, this guy, he told me and it works. So, yeah, let's let's just move with it. That's uh, that's very important, you know. But it's not right. so much about, like, if you're higher, I talk, or if you're lower, I don't talk. No, no, it's like... Everybody has value in his own way, but negative. Yeah, just don't, don't bring negative. Don't bring negativity to the network, you, you, and don't be. A, you know, person, if he's like, uh, uh, if he's like a snake, you will detect these things. Right. You know? So just don't yeah. troll those people. Yeah, gotta put on those snake detectors. So network with the right people. Stay away from negativity, and uh, make sure that if you are joining a network of people who have a lot more experience than you, that may try to think of what you can contribute to that. You know you can also contribute to that group and uh i think yeah i think it's one of the most important things here so yeah uh, it's not the whole looking up and looking down it's just avoiding the negativity and networking with the right people mm. uh it's all great advice and, and it's all great most advice. important like move 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 with speed like you always have to like don't go yeah. And, and yeah like don't go and think about building a website like actually go build it. like if, if you haven't started after this interview, like watch the full interview, there's more info. Go actually build the website. In one day, you can launch. Like it doesn't take long. Doesn't take a month. Doesn't take six months. You can do it very fast. You have to take your first step and then take every step after that. So every day you need to have some kind of a goal of an action that you're going to take, not just something you're going to learn, but an action that you're going to take. Take one little action every day. Today, I'm just going to sign up for a Shopify. Tomorrow, I'm going to work on product research. The next day, I'm going to, uh, I don't know, uh, upload my first product from the product research. If you take action every day, you're definitely, definitely going to be on the road. Even if the, the first actions that you're going to take are not going to make you rich, but they're going to help you learn the way so that you can continue going and growing from there. I, so, yeah. I, I, fast. Like, I wouldn't uh, sort of um, like just start. Build the whole website on one day, on day one. Ev- like you can, you can accomplish everything in, in one, two days to, to learn the whole, the whole thing. Like it's, it's not, uh, don't think, okay, the, in, in two weeks, I want to have my website. No, you have it in one day. Like you, you, people advertising without logos, they are they are making sales without yeah. logos. Without, yeah, like you have to move speed because th- that's also one thing, especially with like with 
with internet money, like opportunities, they don't like there. There's a window of opportunity, you know, like things that um, uh, work now won't work in a couple months. Right. So if you don't make the most out of it at this point, the opportunity will go away. And uh, with crypto, for example, it's always like okay, if you didn't buy early, th then you're fucked. You know, so right. so like move with speed. Don't think about it too much. But just move, move, move. And if you have a brother, if you have a brother, it works to do it together. But uh, I mean, it's from my experience. You know, like if you have a lot of uh, um, uh, beef between your brother and you you can't get along, because I, I, people happen. like ask me. You know, like yeah, I'm not I'm not very close with my brother, uh, but um, you know, like I'm successful and he, he works a normal job. Then I think yeah, I, I don't know how to fix that. To be honest, it's like uh, let, let's say you have a glass and it's broken. How are you going to fix the original glass? Like it, it doesn't work. Like, um, but if you have, go go full with your brother. Like I have all my money, everything we own. It's it's all together. There's no oh he has to spend. It's not separated. Yeah. I spend fifty. No, we 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 built as a family. And by the way, if you're a, 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 of course a female listener, then we're talking about siblings. So you can do it with your sister or do it with your brother. You can be brothers and sisters and maybe even yeah, do it. Like I, mean, I, have, I would love to hear about this story. Yeah, I have I have a good relationship with my sister. You know, um, I as I was saying, like I try to involve her, but I I feel also like okay, maybe it's it's just not. It was also, yeah, not, like no, not brother. for you, but for anyone else. Yeah, yeah. You, like you have your brother, yeah. and, and he takes care of you, like um, um, as, as I'm supposed to. So I, I don't push on her if if she doesn't want to. I just let her like be, be, uh, yeah, a good sister. <laughs> be a sister. I'm not gonna t t I ask for like the best advice and the best tips that you can give to finish the interview because we gave more than enough juicy golden nuggets in this interview so do you believe that shopify is here to stay is shopify like your platform of choice for the next uh, five uh years or do you think that something else is probably going to take its place yeah so so by, by asking it's not like um I, i'm not here to stay I'm decades, the future. I'm just asking decades, for your decades, decades in like uh mm. in, in e-commerce you know? like we are we are making moves in in other industries um but you know as this interview is about e-commerce like who, who, what's the alternative like who, who is other which other there are some who are trying and, and, but and, and, even if, and even if it's in five years uh it's going away like who cares make the money now and and get Adapt. your family get get your uh, your mother to retire um if they want to move to a different country help them with that like who, who cares about five years if, if Shopify is still around. Just yeah. use you because you need to learn to adapt anyway. No matter what happens, you need to learn to adapt, like you said yeah, earlier. I, I don't even have five years in, in history in terms of like that's amazing in e-commerce. Making making good money, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, I think the, the first encounter with, with drop shipping actually it goes back to maybe when I was like 12, 13 years old. So I, I was playing like FIFA and and if there is time for the story, otherwise we just skip it. Yeah, a few minutes. You can go for it. <laughs> yeah, cool. yeah, it's a very short story, but yeah, it was funny. Like, um, I don't know if you ever played like FIFA, the FIFA Ultimate Team. Of course, of course. You, you get these coins, you know, these coins, and there was like a point where people realized, okay, you can you can sort of buy these coins. You know, like you, you don't want to play a lot, so you want to you know, stack up. Um, right. And there, there was this Chinese random website my my friend told me about, where you can get like certain amount of coins for very cheap. You know, mm -hmm. like uh, one euro or ninety cent. Mm -hmm. So then I, I used to go around like my friends, yeah, I can hook you up with this much. Yeah. Uh, it's only going to cost you 10 yeah, It's called drop servicing. So you're drop shipping the service that you're getting from someone else and just uh, marking up the price for it. That's amazing, by the way. I, I call it I call it just, just making money, you know, but it's... it's yeah. the one. <laughs> <laughs> so so people, uh, I remember one, one friend, he, he bought for like 10 euros and then he had to list his cards and I, the story gets too long. but it's funny you know like i i think also with with a lot of people that you know uh do business entrepreneurs they, they sort of have these stories you know like it's it's never the the quiet guy that never tried nothing you know like you yeah. make it in business like they're also a little bit troublesome as as a as a as a child i, I think yeah, you can I, also I, be a quiet successful person but you can also be a troublesome one <laughs> uh, look, uh, I, I I can't ask more questions because we're really out of time. But uh, Abbas from the Ecom Brothers, everyone, I'm going to leave once again. If you're listening to it on Spotify, on Apple Music, uh, or Apple Podcasts, or anywhere else where you're not watching the video, go to youtube.com/slash/autoDS, search for Ecom Brothers, and you will find this video. 
below the video, I'm leaving a link to his Instagram channel. If you want to ask him any questions, if you need any advice, he's there for you. And I really want to thank you for this interview because once again, it was super spontaneous. You didn't know what questions I want to ask you. You went through with it really, really well. I can see that you have tons of experience in this field and we were maybe just scratching the surface but the advice that was given here is more than enough for anyone to understand the structure that they need to go to through to start the right way and to have a formal structure of what they need to do and how they need to do it right so again i really want to thank you abbas it's been great having you here today thank you brother thank you it was great and if people want to want to follow me on instagram that's that's fine you know click on the link below this video at ecom brothers so you'll see me, you'll see my brother. So at Econ Brothers for anyone who's not watching the video.